In terms of the Friday Forum, the session that you're here for um, this afternoon, um, we really wanted to offer context for the kind of programmation and the curation of this event, um, how we put it together, and also to discuss some of the issues um, inherent and uh, the problematics um, within um, kind of studying, distributing, and viewing popular Arab cinema. Um, the, the Friday Forum is also something that at the Arab British Centre we've discussed um, rolling out for some time as a regular series of events in London um, on Fridays to discuss and critique issues relating to Arab culture. And bec with the ICA as a significant institution, an incubator of ideas and over history of promoting lunchtime and afternoon talks, I'm honoured and delighted that the first of our Friday Forums can be here um, this afternoon. Um, in terms of the lineup today, I'm, we're going to be quite trying to keep quite swift to schedule. The first session, which will begin shortly, um, stu is um, studies or looks at popular Arab cinema from an academic perspective of sorts, um, the theorization and the writing of that into history. The second session will look at issues pertaining to audiences, distribution, with a particular focus on the UK, and then there will be a 20-minute break, followed by the final session, which will look at and consider Arab cinema um, in practical terms. So I won't delay much further and introduce um, our first two speakers. Um, Viola Shafi will be um, uh, kind of this presentation is um, anchored by um, Viola's research and writing on popular Arab cinema. Viola was one of the first um, writers and academics to really write holistically about Arab cinema in an academic context in English. Her book from 1998, Arab Cinema, History and Cultural Identity, is considered a seminal and landmark text. And her second book from 2007, Popular Cinema, Gender, Class and Nation, um, is also a start was a starting point for us to discuss many of the themes within the festival. Um, Viola is going to be in discussion, and we're honoured and delighted, with Dina Matar, who is also a writer and academic, and also the head of the Centre for Film and Media Studies at SOAS, the School of African and Oriental Studies at the University of London. So I'm going to pass over to them. There'll be room for questions after each session, so do keep those in your head. And um, most people often say turn off mobile phones in screenings and discussions, but I think if you've got a smartphone and you tweet or Facebook, please do feel free to tweet your ideas and thoughts out there into the world. Thank you. I do not have any claims about knowing much about cinema, but uh, the, the, the way that we're going to be uh, holding this uh, first forum is going to be a question and answer, so we're not going to give speeches. I'm just going to ask Viola a couple of questions or perhaps four questions to start up, and then I'm, I'm going to invite <coughs> you to um, ask uh, questions uh, as well. Um, again, as uh, as Omar said, I uh, I'm the director of the Center for Media and Film Studies at SOAS, um, and my uh, interest is really at the kind of intersection between uh, popular culture, uh, culture, politics, and communication in the Arab world. Uh, so cinema does come in, and uh, the visual, the kind of visual culture which we are uh, very much aware of right now is there. And I'm very excited to have uh, Viola here to talk about her, um, the way, the, her entry. Um, why did you decide to enter into this kind of uh, uh, discussion of Arab cinema and what made you want to do it? Um, and, and perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about yourself because uh, I, I know and perhaps many of you don't know that, that uh, Viola is also a filmmaker. So perhaps you could tell us uh, more about that. Okay, I mean, actually the start of it was uh, an event like this. <laughs> because of my binational background, I was kind of as a student. I wanted also, I, I, was, uh, I lived in Hamburg at that time, so in Germany. So I wanted to present uh, a popular Arab Egyptian cinema to uh, a German audience and so far I was told uh, I had already, you know, some contacts to the Berlin uh, Berlin Film Festival, and everybody was telling us how difficult it was to get, you know, films from Egypt, and that it's so bureaucratic. And the Berlin Festival had already given up in, you know, bringing any films or from Egypt to Germany. That was uh, in the late 80s. Uh, so, uh, well. <laughs> 
as a student, you have more time and you're more enthusiastic. So I went to, to Egypt and I stayed there for a few weeks, you know, and I sat every day on the desk <laughs> of those, you know, bureaucrats and waited until we had together something like 16, 17 films from Egypt and we screened them in Germany. It was a very long process, but it was the first real big retrospective of Egyptian cinema in, in Germany and it was called Hollywood on the Nile. Uh, actually, well, what we showed was less Hollywood on the Nile, it was rather realist cinema, you know, the good fine works that were at the time labeled as, you know, uh, so the ones that were pre pre representative, while this kind of films we did not show. And I think this is also quite, uh, you know, telling. But I'm going back to this kind of dichotomy uh, between, you know, the so-called committed and realist cinema and the popular cinema. I'm going to, we can, you know, we'll come back to that point later, but to answer the complete the answer is that then um, um, my, I, I was asked by one of the, one of the uh, journalists, what do you think is so different about Arab cinema than mm. any other, uh, in cinema and so this made me actually this was uh, you know the on uh, start or the initial question for my first uh, uh, book that was also a phd that was arab uh, cinema cultural identity uh, this was the initial question what is you know what is so special about arab cinema is it different is it really different because there were some people like yusuf shaheen for example the famous egyptian director who said why are you asking me these questions? Uh, this is an international language and films, you know, travel and uh, I don't, do not use a different language than uh, Fellini, for example. All right. Good question. But, uh, but for me, uh, still, there was more to discover. And actually, I discovered more about it in the beginning of, uh, you know, in the initial phase of, of Arab cinema. Uh, that was was also more related to popular culture and actually also to traditional culture in mm. the in Egypt particularly. Mm. You talked about uh, the, the the notion of Hollywood and uh, how do you define or how do you think that Arab cinema has evolved um, over the stages? You know, is it has it all, has it aspired to become uh, a Hollywood type cinema or? Is it is it different? I mean, you talked about the specific uh, the question of whether it is um, specific. You know, what what is particular about Arab cinema, and why do we need to to study it, and why do we need to understand it? So perhaps we can answer these points one by. I know there are too many questions there, <coughs> but perhaps we could uh, perhaps we could throw some light on 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 these questions. Yeah, well. Unlike other arts, I mean, this is like, you know, an old, it's nothing new. Uh, cinema is also an industry, so uh, it started as an industry and therefore uh, it, it had a universal also outlook and it was uh, using also, you know, and it was submitted to the same, to the same uh, dynamisms and the same mechanisms of the market. So Egypt as the biggest country at that time uh, uh, was that country and uh, that was able to to uh, to create such a, uh, a local film industry and it would have not been able to do so uh, without actually the larger Arab audience and without having had earlier um, already ventured into these markets with their disc uh, music industry. So the songs, uh, particular songs, you know, Abdel Wahab, but also Munir al Mahdeya and so on, and all these songs, they were a kind of, they had opened the door and they opened the door more for the, for the Egyptian movies in the 30s. Uh, so this was the initial, initial issue. So, but what comes together here is also what is very important why in the 30s it's actually because this was the beginning of the sound, uh, the invention of the sound. Well, the sound and well, uh, it, the sound in cinema is a long story, but uh, when it really got sp it spread, this was in, in 1928. Uh, uh, and this was actually the beginning of all third world uh, um, film industries. Because the sound gave suddenly, you know, a, uh, this was a big opportunity for 
more local and poor uh, countries uh, to find an audience because suddenly they could use things that are not translatable like humor humor is usually not translatable and they could use music local music so these these two items uh, were actually the big assets of uh, Egyptian cinema in its, uh, you know, in its local mm -hmm. surrounding. Uh, so here, you know, comes on the one hand traditional culture that put a specific, well, Arab music, which was again actually also a commercial music, but well, this was this was one part of it, language, mm -hmm. humor. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, the, the market. Mm. I have a question for you, which is the notion of Arab and cinema. You know, the question of using the term Arab to describe cinema is, uh, you know, Arab cinema. And then you have the book, which is uh, popular Egyptian cinema. So you somehow moved away from this kind of overarching term, uh, which is used to talk about cinema as a genre, but then Arab, the language that perhaps connects them. So. Um, uh, co connects these this genre or the the different uh, kind of uh, uh, products that come out. So we have the Lebanese, we have Syrian, we have Palestinian, we have Moroccan, we have Tunisian. Um, so and then you moved on to talk about popular Egyptian cinema um, in your particularly in your academic uh, interventions in this field, which you know, again is is very important. Mm. But but is there something that we could call Arab cinema? Can we use that term really to describe um, a, a, a genre and, and why can we use it? Or do we need to go and break down into categories? Because I think, you know, my other question would be is that we, we it, it might be interesting to think about that as well. So perhaps you could like, be well, describing these different uh, film genres mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, whatever, melodrama, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, biopics, uh, historical uh, spectacles, etc. Uh, and the early, you know, the ones that were used in international, well, in Western cinema and uh, in the international field during the first 30 years of, of, of filmmaking, 50 years, were actually mel melodrama and comedy and the musical. Um, but uh, now asking about um, uh, Arab, why label it Arab cinema, actually uh, there is a problem um, in, in the English, English term of Arab cinema because uh, in uh, French publications they used at that time when, when I started working on it, they actually used, uh, used the word always in the plural. Uh, it used in the French to be uh, les cinémas arabes, which means, you know, in a plural form, which is of course absolutely more adequate, particularly it would have been more adequate for, for my first book. Um, uh, as I was, you know, speaking, uh, trying to um, kind of, yeah, uh, develop a history uh, of all of the Arab countries. Mm. And of course, Arab is, well, I mean, it's a, this is a big discussion. And I tried also to include that a little bit in my book in order to make try to make it clear that with Arab I'm not, uh, you know, uh, trying to reproduce the sort of pan-Arab uh, uh, discourse, neither am I trying to reproduce this kind of, you know, uh, uni unitarist uh, ideology mm -hmm. of, you know, um, but rather uh, that I was um, trying to describe a, a pluralist and a pluralist image of you know what what has been uh, created in the Arab world, and in fact, in fact, there has been also historically speaking uh, a, a big problem uh, in that uh, in that respect because you have on the one hand uh, a strong and commercial uh, commercially. Um, uh, oriented uh, uh, Egyptian cinema uh, as you know uh, that what had already conquered all the markets while you had other or in all the other countries difficulties huge difficulties even to make the first film uh, 
particularly in uh, the French colonized countries, uh, this means in Syria and also all over North Africa, where we can say that the real beginning of cinema was not before uh, the respective uh, national independence mm -hmm. uh, for political reasons. Uh, but also uh, due to you know the the local markets because you know they had were not so they had smaller populations etc and Egyptian cinema was already there uh, so these new new uh, cinemas were actually always were were opposed you know to the so-called popular Egyptian cinema and at times. They, they were almost, you know, in, uh, uh, yeah, they, they got almost, they became almost mm. enemies mm. Uh, because Egyptian, Egyptian film was seen like Hollywood uh, films as being, you know, an obstacle to uh, the real national cinemas, which were perceived at that time as something that, you know, reflects national identity, that reflects the, you know, the real, the real Arab, population uh, whereas uh, and this reflects here also of course the po nationalist and colonial uh, post anti-colonial ideas as opposed to the so-called dream factory uh, uh, from Egypt and so actually this schism is, is or schism is actually active until today we still mm. it, it lives on in the idea of the independent Arab cinema that is largely today Western funded, not, not anymore by the respective states and still the commercial cinema. Yeah, because you mentioned the term popular and then when you started your talk, you talked about um, idealism and you talked about uh, committed cinema. Um, perhaps you could, you know, in relevance to what you've just said, which is the kind of the distinction, can we make is there really is is distinction 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 between what is popular and and kind of shabby of the term popular in Arabic is translated into shabby, which sometimes means you know it is a class you know can can donate class uh, has class connotations, but how do you you know is there really a fine line between what we could call popular or committed and nationalist sort of quote unquote um, cinema or film. And uh, what is happening right now, you know, sort of, I think from what I can see from the, uh, myself, you know, I'm not I'm not following everything, but I can see that there is a, doesn't seem to be that much of a production of film right now um, following the uh, Arab uprisings or du during the Arab uprisings. So perhaps you could talk about that. And then I have one last question, and then I, I'm aware that you would like to also ask your question. So. Uh, well, you know, the issue is if we start speaking about, uh, you know, the Ar uh, well, the Ar Arab uprising, I, I think this is, uh, this we should discuss separately. We, 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 I'm in this context, absolutely, but it should be separated now from the issue of popular cinema and, you know, popular and independent cinema, because we are now in a kind of... Uh, special and emergency situation where you know things are still moving and changing and uh, uh, maybe also some of the you know the rules of the market are you know are, are not you know working currently uh, so we cannot judge right now what what is going to happen uh, but and and still it's an interesting discussion because uh, I, I think revolutions it was like in cuba or in in the udssr for example we we had uh 10 years later extraordinarily interesting works coming out from the revolution but mm -hmm. you know it takes time until you get a real avant-gardist cinema evolving from uh, a political uprising mm -hmm. it takes time so uh, but uh, you know we know of uh, and, uh, you know like currently the uh, innovative and independent um, uh, initiatives are mushrooming uh, and of course this is this is natural because we are in an ex extraordinary situation and so it will create an extraordinary cinema with other means other languages other also uh, venues uh, but this in the in the future now until the uprising, I would say, 
Um, <clears throat> I got more interested in the popular cinema because I felt that it was marginalized. Mm -hmm. So I almost felt pity with popular cinema. And this actually brings us back to such an event like this here, because uh, due to uh, the socialist convictions, you know, the socialist phase of, uh, you know, and the anti-colonial phase, after, after the independence, uh, the national independence in the respective Arab countries, we had, uh, you know, a kind of discourse that, that spread that the Dream Factory, which is an absolutely, you know, well, uh, Marxist, if you want to say so, oriented uh, discourse, that the Dream Factory is, you know, opium to the, to the people and that it distracts them from understanding the, their reality. And so the other, the better cinema was the realist cinema. Uh, the, the kind that you will see in beginning of and the end, um, there is one, one film that is included here that actually belongs to this kind of more committed cinema that was politically interested and were, they what want that film? The Beginning and End by oh. Salah Abu Saif, that is also you know, an adaptation of Nagib Mahfouz's uh, um, uh, novel. So this type of films were accepted also in the West rather as being you know the uh, the film uh, as being the the real arab cinema that is really speaking for the people while actually the popular cinema is also speaking for the people but in a completely different way and this was completely neglected in film theory but also in criticism film local and 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 western criticism was actually in that uh, was quite moralistic if you want to say so it was influenced also apart from this kind of socialist uh, orientation it was also informed by aesthetic the aesthetic uh, you know, uh, well, this is this is a good movie. This is a bad movie. This is a well-made movie. This is not. So, this is a tribal new, and this is moralistic actually. While they did not decipher uh, the content of of popular cinema, popular cinema is syncretistic. That means it takes from everywhere. You know, so early Egyptian cinema drew from local, very, very, very local traditions. They drew from, you know, uh, uh, the Karagos, uh, the local Punch and Judy shows. They drew from, uh, you know, the uh, local comedy uh, theater. They drew, uh, they drew also from, from, from local music and so on. And they also, the repertoire of the shadow play, for example, you can find recycled in early Egyptian cinema. So this kind of, of uh, taking from everywhere, being syncretistic and at the same time recycling, you know, this is part of popular cinema, but this is also very close to, to the people. And actually, uh, uh, yeah, and so, uh, but this has been disregarded to, mm. for political reasons. Mm. And this is, this is, why popular cinema has been kind of marginalized and of yeah. course we can and i think popular culture in general in, in in the arab world as well as other countries has been marginalized to a certain extent but what can um, what can uh, popular cinema and or popular cinema tell us putting aside the notion of mediation which is the fact that you have somebody filming and you have you know settings and so on which can somehow change the context of, of a film uh, according to uh, my viewpoint, but I might be wrong, or the meaning of the film. So you have the positioning, the kind of how the camera works and who is making the film and editing the film and which shots are taken and who is allowed to speak and so on. But, but the question is that I want to ask is, and my last question because now I come to you, which is what, what can popular cinema tell us about everyday life and about, uh, you know, people's demands and beliefs and so on. Um, do you see that as, as a, you know, a, a place where we could actually find signs for, uh, or, you know, kind, kind of understand more what's going on in societies, particularly in changing and transforming societies, um, like uh, we have in the Arab world at the moment? Uh, absolutely, but you always have to take into consideration the issue of negotiation. So mm -hmm. for me, popular cinema is therefore interesting because it does not 
represent themes in a individual stories. They are very close, you know, uh, to certain locations. They are not generalizing, they are not stereotyping, they are not exaggerating. But popular cinema is actually negotiating, but always negotiating um, ideas, ideologies, uh, and understandings. So, for example, they have been early Egyptian cinemas have uh, or is, uh, films have been negotiating the position of woman. They have been neg negotiating arranged marriage. They have been negotiating modernism. So. Uh, they were blamed for being, you know, like representing the Pashas and so on. But actually what they were about was about the dream of social, uh, you know, ascent. And, uh, and they were in that, uh, they were actually representing uh, the, that, uh, that the society was actually mm -hmm. in flux. That at that time, during the 30s, 40s, society was changing from a sort of feudal organization into a more modern and, and, mm -hmm. and more bourgeois oriented organ, uh, organized society. So they did negotiate that in the 70s. They negotiate, for example, also the empowerment of women. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, uh, for example, uh, some of the stars like, uh, like um, have been blamed for the uh, some of the female stars have, have been blamed for their triviality but in the end you know they have been also uh, kind of representing uh, uh, an in action movies for example when women became uh, uh, you know the heroines of action movies this is an empowered image it's actually negotiating modern feminism but through the means of very tribal uh, mm. and what puts people what puts you know the kind of informed and 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 uh, also cultured critic aside and also the bourgeoisie is that these films still have um, you know trivial content bad acting bad music and so on but at the same time they do something very important they reflect exactly you know the, there where people are standing they are re they are confronted I mean the audience particularly the, the not so well educated audience this is their reality. It's a it's a syncret it's a reality that is not clear. You know that is in flux, where mm. n all the time they have to deal with with a lot of of contradictions and uh, ambivalencies. And this is what this type of uh, of cinema reflects. Thank you. Uh, I think I must report that even serious kind of quote unquote serious academic studies like history are looking into film archives as a way of trying to understand historical processes. So it's, it's interesting that we are debating this uh, at this moment. Um, so again, I'm opening, opening to the questions to you. So please do ask questions. We have uh, 10 minutes, uh, Omar? Yeah. yeah. Please, you have an expert here, and you, you can ask whatever you want to ask. And... Um, well, uh... I mean, you talk about popular cinema or these kind of films. Do you think they carry a material, a good material for violations of human rights in in, in the Arab world? Thank you. Mm, I didn't fully understand your question. So, could you exp uh, explain that what a bit I more? Mean is oh, sorry. What I mean is. Uh, in these films, I mean, let's say uh, through the stories, you could see uh, there is a violation of women's rights or or the actual situation in the Middle East, which is so dire and so bad that it could, uh, you know, it 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 makes it it creates a chaotic situation, but mainly violations of women's rights. I mean, do you think it can be, this film can be used to highlight the suffering of the people, of the person in the Middle East, in particular women? Well, I mean, popular uh, films have, or in general, uh, Arab cinema has been, of course, dealing a lot with, you, uh, with women's rights and, and uh, particularly the more committed films. But also, you know, popular... Such as... <laughs> Yeah, uh, Aziza, the Tunisian yeah. Aziza, there have been uh, uh, quite a number actually. Um, the list is long, the list is really long. Um, yeah, 
not in the old ones, in the new films. The very new films. Yeah. Uh, you have, for example, um, Asrar al Banet, uh, Secrets of, of Girls, that was about, you know, premature. Uh, a teenager pregnancy you have I mean you know it's the list would be too long to to cite it but you you have films dealing with that uh, of course and I mean if you want you know I'm I, I we can later sit together and I give, can give you a list or you just google it it's very easy and there is actually also a dictionary for Arab film uh, women filmmakers uh, by AUC so you can you can um, yeah go Look, look into that dictionary. Thank you, um, thank you very much. Um, it was very interesting for me to hear how the introduction of uh, sound really made a cinematic culture kind of start off, kick off there. What's the relationship to television with, um, with popular Arab cinema and the arrival of television and the distribution of these films? And is the, is the popular television culture different from the popular cinematic culture? Well, <laughs> I'm not such a, a specialist on television, but uh, actually, well, the, the uh, Arab television started again with Egyptian television uh, in um, uh, in 1963, I think it was. So they, uh, so this uh, initiated actually uh, a, a generation, a new filmmakers generation into the old films. So there is a generation that grew up with films being being screened on television all the time. Uh, but uh, of course, also like in 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 uh, in Europe. Uh, the emergence uh, of um, of television uh, also affected cinema in different in at different phases. So in the beginning, you know, it, it reduced, of course, also uh, the the uh, the numbers of audiences, and particularly in the 70s and 80s, uh, after the invention also or the spread of the VCR. Uh, there was a phase when you know women also and families rather stayed at home and did not go to the movies anymore. Uh, so it became you know the audiences became more male uh, uh, in brackets uh, at times. And again, um, well, so in that the television did 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 have an effect actually. It it reduced at times also uh, the number of of movie goers. At the same time, um, television developed also. They are star the stars of uh, uh, another star. Um, yeah, a number of stars, and and they they developed also their own aesthetics, and they started actually also to 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 inform each others. For in Egypt, for example, it's today that you know the stars of cinema when they get old or they cannot work anymore, they go to uh, to. Uh, to uh, uh, they work more for television. Um, I think, if I may comment briefly, um, the there's also the musal salats. You know, the, the serials have taken over a bit. Um, yes. But I'll have that question, and then I, if I may, ask a question which I think is pertinent as well. So, I was very curious about an earlier comment that you made, Dina Matar, and also uh, in regards to popular Arab cinema, is that you said that popular culture in the Arab world is, is more or less always marginalized. And I'm curious why that is. Is it because, like, with popular cinema, is speaking, it has the concerns and it's reaching to a very specific local audience in that, like, some of the popular culture, for example, I've written about Syrian lingerie, the racy lingerie culture of Syria, is that speaking to a very specific audience? Is this why the popular culture? I mean, now we're in a time of fine, there's a fine art boom coming out of the Arab world, but the voices of local people are still sort of marginalized. I'm very curious if you can comment about that. Do you want me to answer this? Um, I, I can respond as well. But. Well, you know, it is like in, um, modern Arab, uh, you know, arts, fine arts now, that you have the cure, a curator and the gallery is becoming, you know, kind of the, the, 
the ones who not only you know they do not just collect that but actually they have a say and uh, they become the catalyst for a certain type of arts and the same actually uh, is the case with uh, you know commissioning editors from television since the late 80s in europe they have become you know the catalysts for independent or auteur uh, Arab cinema. The same applies now also to the funding institutions more and more, the funding in institutions from the Gulf states, mm -hmm. uh, which means that, you know, it's not the audience in the Arab world that uh, initiates this type of cinema, but rather cultural institutions. And having said this, I have to point up, out that these films then go to festivals, and this is a big market, and they go to art house cinemas. This is a very small and poor market, but in the end, the films that the European or the, the international festival market wants to see is the, a sort of art house cinema that, you know, is aesthetic uh, in a certain way, that is uh, innovative, that is, uh, uh, that breaches, you know, breaches, um, uh, the, in a different way than the popular cinema can, can do. And this is a market on its own and it has also its preferences and this is very dangerous because if you look at the films that have, I mean, as one example is the German market that I know a little bit better is what the kind of films from the Arab world that have been distributed there since in the last Arab, uh, 10 years, for example, are largely films that are, you know, either they deal with the Palestinian question, with terrorism, or with, you know, uh, oppressed the oppression of women. These are the key issues that, you know, the West wants, uh, us in the Arab world to discuss for them. You know, this is what they are interested in. Of course, with this, you are put in a certain, you know, in a certain, yeah, third world ethnographic uh, corner even. And, and I always like to, to cite, you know, uh, uh, Suleiman Sisi's uh, 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 sentence. You know, Suleiman Sisi, the director of Yelen, um, a, a very famous uh, West African filmmaker, uh, he said, you know, what they want from us are ethnographic films for the ethnographic, or for the ethnography classes. And this is the big danger also, you know, and this is why popular cinema, in my view, uh, has been ma marginalized. The same happened to Bollywood, for example. Bollywood, they, you know, suddenly there was a realization, oh, wow, this is a real powerful cinema and they have, you know, they have their own language, but it's also a very rich cinema and it got admired for their dances, for their specific, for, for its specific characteristics. But this did not happen before India did not, you know, enter the kind of international economic market. And the moment the Arab, the Arab world would do so, you know, you would find certainly also more interest in the local, uh, in the local market. But the problem currently is that your local market is crumbling because, you know, of the political situation and also because, you know, you have, you know, the main major uh, local industries that was before Egypt, now a little bit also Morocco. These are poor market, poor filmmaking countries and they don't have the same means like a big subcontinent like India to produce really you know, uh, expensive films. And this is the issue, to my, in my opinion. Um, just, just to point out, I think, you know, there are so many issues that we could discuss here that we have to limit ourselves. And I'm aware there's one question which I will take, final question. But before that, just to answer your uh, query, um, what I mean by popular culture has been marginalized in academia in the sense that we academics have been only looking at uh, kind of uh, forms of culture that, or, or kind of, let us say high politics, uh, rather than uh, or, or former politics, rather than informal politics. What happens on the street? Uh, we we are beginning to look into that, and I think the Arab world has suffered from that. Also, it's not only us academics living in the West and studying the Arab world; it's also the academics there. Um, there's also there's been this kind of elitism in uh, in in thinking between you know in in kind of just making a a divide, a distinction between what we call high and low culture, which has been Luckily and kind of thankfully, it's it's being removed thanks to 
uh, the efforts of uh, people like Viola and, and other people uh, who are working, uh, Brian is one of them, uh, other people who have been working on that. The other issue that we really need to think about and perhaps you can take away with you is the question of funding. You know, international funding for films is a big thing. Um, and, and where does the funding go? And who gets funded? Uh, you mentioned Palestine. I'm, I'm aware of the Palestinian uh, issue, which is what, what fund, where funding goes, but again, the question of restrictions on what is being said as well. So even with funding comes uh, come some restrictions on what you're allowed to say or what you're not allowed to say. You're not allowed to say anything really very outrageous about Israel, for example. So these issues we really need to pay attention to. And the, and the other third one is the question of international festivals. Where and which films end up, it's very much like uh, art you were talking about. So the last question. Uh, it's actually very much picking up what you've been saying, because um, I realize sometimes it's very tempting. Uh, sorry, can you hear me without this, or do, you need, do I need to figure? Yes. OK. Um, I'm aware that sometimes we fall into the trap of this dichotomy you talked about, of popular cinema as opposed to serious political um, cinema, which unfortunately a lot of examples that come to my mind, and I'm by no means an expert, are made by novice filmmakers that are uh, that use the cinema like a like a newspaper article uh, more than anything. And I wondered whether there is any hope, any any um, examples you might know of either of you of some modern filmmakers that are able to bridge the gap, that are able to do films that have an authentic voice despite the tyranny of the very limited marketplace we have? Well, you just look at the program. I mean, Yusuf Shaheen was one of them. He always tried to, you know, use stars and songs and da 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 and so on. But actually, he's not really the type of very, very popular um, a very popular cinema representative, but all his life has been kind of trying to push the borders further. So some of the, the titles that are here in, you know, in the, uh, are, are of the type, or of course also Busta, which is, you know, a film that uh, had success, but at the same time it was also trying, you know, and it's, it's, it was created without actually a real industrial base. So Sorry, I meant any modern, you know, the last five years, last ten years, possibly. Well, Bostar is one of the past, uh, last five, five years. And you have also in Algeria some, well, it, Algeria is a special problem because it's, you know, kind of uh, 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 diaspora. But um, uh, Nadir Muknesh, for example, or uh, Mirza Padwesh, all his life he has been doing this type of, you know, crossing the borders between the two. So there are Nadine, a lot of... Nadine Lafakishi, an example Nadine of that. La well, um, yeah, some, of course some she is also, because, yeah, I mean, she tries, of course, also, you know, to kind of to address issues like in Caramel, fe femi feminine, uh, you know, uh, of a fem female, uh, female identity, and then at the same time, she tries also to appeal to the audience with, you know, kind of popular elements. But, mm -hmm. yeah, so... Examples abound, of course. Well, uh, luckily you might have the chance to speak to Viola later on. Um, but I must end this session because we have a full program and uh, we have some interesting panels coming through. So thank you very much, Viola. Thank, thank you, you for inviting us to speak with